hands up. Good morning. I'm going to pray for us. If you don't mind, just go ahead and lift up your hands in surrenderance to our God. Lord, we thank you for coming here and being in this place. God, we, we lift up your name. Jesus, we fix our eyes on Champion Cowboy Church. How y'all doing this morning? First, let me say happy Father's Day to all you dads and stepdads out here. Because I'm going to tell you, man, I had the privilege of growing up with a dad. And I had a lot of friends that didn't have a father and they don't know what it's like. But I appreciate all you dads. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for not just doing your job, as they like to say. But man, being a father is a serious business. And I've been learning that with my girls um, every single day. So dads, thank you from the bottom of my heart for being that dad that we all appreciate, love, and need. Let's pray. <laughs> father, we just thank you this morning. Father, we thank you for your word. Father, we just thank you for all these dads out here and stepdads that have stepped up. And, and fill that role that is much needed in these children's lives, Father. And without a dad, I don't know where we would be, Father. So we just thank you and continue to bless all the fathers out here. Continue to bless everyone here today, everyone that's not with us here at church. Father, just open up our hearts and minds to prepare us for the word that you have. And give Pastor Gene the strength to get through this message today, Father. We just ask this in your son's holy name we pray. Amen.
this thing. Let all the earth rejoice. Let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice. It trembles at his voice. How great! such a beautiful name.
Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Morning. How y'all doing this morning? I usually got some up here to lay something on. This morning we up here without nothing. Amen. Evidently we don't need it today. Pastor must have a good message. He don't have to beat on nothing today. Amen. Hey, welcome. If you're a first time visitor, we want to welcome you here. Uh, we got a, a card. It's called a welcome home card. And the seat back in front of you, it's orange, I think. And uh, if you'll fill that out and turn it into Welcome Center, we've got a bag of goodies for you. We've got a little loaf of bread and some information. And uh, if you've been here before, thank you for coming back. And uh, we've got a saying around this church. Come on, people. Let's let all our visitors know what our saying is. We're, we're, a, we're a family church. We're a church that loves the Lord. Amen? Amen. If you're visiting and you've got a home church, when you get back to your home church, get behind that pastor's vision. Get involved in doing something with your church. You know, we're always trying to get more people involved around here doing stuff. we got an information center over there that's got all kind of information on what's going on with the church. And if you want to volunteer to do something, go over there and find you an area that you'd like to serve in. <clears throat> if you don't know what you'd like to do, take it to the Lord. Pray, to, pray about it. Maybe he'll reveal to you what he's wanting you to do. And if he does reveal to you what he's wanting you to do, you need to step up and start doing it. Amen? Amen. Right now, we got tithes, it's tithes and offerings. <clears throat> Amen. Uh, you know, in Mark 24, the Bible says, what measure you meet shall be met to you. And if you hear the word and believe the word, that measure shall be great for all. Amen. That means it's going to be overflowing. That means if you want blessings by the bushel, start taking a bushel basket to the Word of God and lay it in His hand and watch Him give it back to you in bushel baskets full. Amen. Amen. If you want to receive, you got to give. Amen. Heavenly Father, bless this offering. Bless these tithes. Bless the givers, Father. Bless the hear, the reader, and the doer of your Word. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was brought with The precious blood of Jesus Christ behind your regrets. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born. Jesus is calling, yeah, yeah. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to. The Father's 
Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Come on, y'all, let's lift them up. Oh, what a Savior. Hallelujah. Isn't he Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Sing, bow down before him. Bow down before him. to the altar I want to give you that opportunity this morning if you have a need I want you to come as you guys continue to play if you have a need I want you to come if you have a need I want you to come come on come on we're gonna believe God to meet your needs a long walk and you I just know how the mind works but I don't want you to miss your opportunity come on come on come on come on well, I'm a leader in the church I don't I shouldn't do this because they're gonna wonder what it is who cares what somebody thinks what matters is what God's fixing to do in your life Y'all continue to sing. Go ahead. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's Friends, we're arms fixing to believe God can do something miraculous. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to altar the father's arms are open wide now the second thing For i want to say is this if you're sitting out there and there's somebody that the lord's laid on your heart to pray with would you come stand beside behind them come on i know that happens i just want you to come and help us help us pray this morning taking a lot of time when we're a family church sometimes it takes a long time to get something done in the family amen right. 
Y'all ready to pray? Pray. Are y'all ready to receive? Would you lift your hands up this morning? Heavenly Father, your word says that you are still a healer. How do we know that? Because your word says that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. God, you're able to heal, you're able to feel, you're able to restore, you're able to renew. And Lord, I'm asking you right now to move again on our behalf one more time. God, touch those hearts, touch those lives. I speak to these bodies and I command them to line up with the Word of God and be healed. Lord, I pray those that are in financial stress, God, I pray that they get a hold of your Word and begin to work your Word so that your Word will work in them. God, help us to be obedient. Lord, I'm asking you to renew today. I'm asking you to restore today. Lord, I'm asking you to touch every heart and every life in this room. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Do it again. Do it again, Lord. Do it again. In Jesus' name. So today is, is Child Dedication Day. And I know that there were a couple of families that were signed up in the first service. If you're here, would you come? Please, you got to come down to the front. Is anyone here? Don't know. because I'm, There they are. Good, good. There they are. You know... In child dedications, you know, we as a, as a body, we're, we have a hand in this as well. You've heard the saying that it takes a village to raise a child. And, and this is a big deal to me, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Because I remember before we started going to church, I knew this guy was a church goer. And he wasn't a very honest guy. And that impacted me. And the reason I'm saying that is to say this to you. You know, your lives and what you do and your actions matter to these, these little ones that God has given us an opportunity to pour into their lives. So it's not just the parents today that we're going to be addressing. It's the church body also. Come on up here, Katie. So I love this. Um, I, this is one of my very favorite things that we do at the church. And it's for two reasons. One is our, um, we're celebrating with you as you decide to raise your babies um, the best that you can with the help of the Lord. And the second is we get, like Pastor said, we get to partner with you as a church. We get to pray over you and believe God for the future of your families. And this is, um, it's so precious. I always say that this is, this is one of those moments that you can go back to as parents. And you can say, Lord, I gave them to you. I dedicated them to you. I've done what you've told me to. So I'm going to need you to intervene. There's been times in my life raising my boys when I've said, Lord, I don't know how to fix this, but I need your help. I need your, I've dedicated them to you. You responsible. You love them more than I do. 
so you can fix it. You can take care of every situation. Amen. 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 <laughs> Let me get out my new eyes. The Word of God says in Matthew chapter 19, it says, Then were there brought unto him little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray. And his disciples rebuked him. But Jesus said, Suffer, little children, and forbid them not to come unto me. That means don't you stop these babies from getting close to me. For such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them, and then he departed. You see, the family is a divine institution ordained of God at the beginning of time. How many of you know God created the family before he ever created the church? I said, let me ask you, how many of you know that God created the family before he ever created the church? So I think the church, I mean, the, the family is hugely important. It says, children are a heritage of the Lord, committed by him to their parents for care, for protection, for raising, for training, and for his glory. It is important that parents recognize this obligation and their responsibility to God in this matter. Jehoshaphat of old trained her own child, Moses, after having given him to the Lord. Hannah recognized that her child was Jehovah's. The Virgin Mary also brought the infant Jesus to the temple. The parents of this child likewise recognize the sacredness and the charge that they're about to take. <laughs> and they're now bringing back their children, these treasures that God has entrusted them with and bringing them back to the Lord. And in doing so, they recognize and publicly acknowledge their responsibility to nurture, to raise, to train, and to love this child in the ways of righteousness and godliness. And I'm going to be speaking to you parents here for the next few moments. In the sight of God in the presence of these witnesses, do you solemnly undertake to bring up these, this child, these children, in the fear and the admonition of the Lord? If so, answer, we do. Do you promise early to seek to lead them to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? If so, answer, we do. Do you promise as far that lies in you to set before them examples and standards of godly and consistent lives? If so, answer, we do. We do. Church family, would you reach your hand in this direction as we pray for them? Father, we just thank you for these families, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that they are committing themselves as parents to raise their children according to your word. We thank you for that. And Father, we just ask, Lord, that you help us as a church body to love these families like you would have us to. Lord, to encourage them, to be a blessing to them. Father, I pray, Lord God, for the future of these babies. Lord God, that you would bless them beyond their parents' imagination. Lord God, that you would give their parents wisdom and grace. Lord, help them to remember they don't have to be perfect. They just have to look to you. Bless them today, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity as a body of believers to come around these families and, and support them and help to encourage them Lord, help us as a church body to pour in wisdom to these parents when they need it. And Lord, I pray this. I pray your hand of blessing not ever leave them. Encourage them daily. 
Father, I'm asking you that you would use them for your purpose, for your honor, and for your glory. Bless them, I pray, in the mighty and the marvelous, the powerful and the miraculous name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Would you give these families a hand, please? <laughs> God is good. And all the time, God is so good. So good. He's, he's better to me than I deserve. It. And if you really knew me, you would, you would agree with that. A five-year-old boy had a huge interest and love for motorcycles. And every time they would be walking down the sidewalk or one would come down the road, he would say, look at that, look at that, look at that. Would you just look at that? One day he was with his father. And he's in the back seat of the, the car and all of a the sudden, these groups of this group of motorcycles begin to come by, and all he could say was, "Vroom, vroom, vroom, Dad! Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! One of these days, Dad, I'm going to have the, one of those." And the dad responded as dads do. He said this. He said, "Not as long as I'm alive, you won't." <laughs> so the next week at school, he and one of his classmates. They're out on the playground and a motorcycle comes by. And he says, look at that, look at that, look at that. Vroom, vroom, vroom. He said, when my dad dies, I'm going to get one of those. <laughs> I remember them days. <laughs> oh. Today I want to talk to you dads, you stepdads. Listen. You know, I only lived with my father briefly in my life. When I say briefly, it was maybe six or eight weeks total. But I had a stepdad. And he and my mother were together as long as I can remember. And I will say this. He was, he was the guy that stepped up when he didn't have to. And I didn't realize that at the time. But I did after I had children. So you stepdads, I want to thank you for what you do. Because it's a big deal. And the Lord sees what you're doing. And I know that, you know, I was a good kid and my sisters just tortured my stepdad. (laughs) So I would see his frustration from time to time. (laughs) Today I just have a, a real simple message for you. It's not my goal to beat you up, to make you feel bad. It's my goal to encourage you, to enlighten you. And I want to just talk to you about this. What is a godly man? What does that look like? Because the truth is, I I never had anybody teach me that. Is there a certain look that you have when you're a godly man? Do you, you know, is that where you wear suits on Sundays and part your hair a certain way and you wear a certain kind of cologne, you go to a certain restaurant? What is that? What does that look like? Philippians chapter 2, verse number 20 and 29 says this. It says, I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare. Verse 29 says, so then welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honor people like him. What is a man? Is the epitome of man John Wayne? 
the tough guy. Is a man, Clint Eastwood, the chiseled face? Or is a man, Mr. T, I pity the fool, tough guy? (laughs) Can I tell you that all three of those people that men look up to for leadership are all actors? I'm going to say something that's going to make some of you mad, but it's okay, it's the truth. John Wayne was not a cowboy. He was an actor. And his name was Morrison, not Wayne. Is a man Mr. Rogers? The nice guy who wouldn't ever hurt anyone? What is a man? You see, I would have rather jumped on John Wayne than Mr. Rogers. You know why? Because Mr. Rogers was a Navy SEAL. How many of you knew that? He could put some whip up on you in a hurry. While he's putting on his sweater. Is a man the the sensitive kind that society wants us to, to, to portray now? Is man passive? Senseless? Is a man not able to make a decision? Does a real man just wear one glove? You see, culture has painted this picture of what a man should be. And today I want to talk to you about what God says a man should be. You notice I haven't used the word father. I haven't used the word dad. I'm talking to the man today. Because any man can be a father. I think you know the rest of that. What does the Bible say a man should be? And here Paul gives us an example of what a man should be in Philippians. I have no one else like him who will show show genuine concern. Let me share with you three values of a godly man. Here's the first one. A godly man is compassionate to others. Notice I didn't say a godly man is sensitive, though he can be. A godly man is compassionate. Philippians 2, 19 through 21 says this, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare. I don't have anybody else I can send you that cares like he does. For everyone, notice what verse 21 says, for everyone looks out for their own interest, not those of Jesus Christ. Paul says that everybody looks out for themselves instead of others. You see, a man's greatness is not determined by his value of wealth. A man's greatness is determined by the wealth of his values. Paul says that everybody looks out for themselves instead of others. What kind of values do you have, sir? Today I must say that the quickest way for us to shipwreck our families is to be self-centered. The Word of God says this. He appointed the man to be the head of the house. And the truth is, whatever the head is, the rest of the body will be also. I'll try to explain that real quick. I'll give you the 39-cent version of it. (laughs) Sir, if you're self-centered and you're a jerk, 
if you're rude, if you're mean, if you're all of those things, then that's what's going to take place in your family. That's what that means. Paul here, he honors Timothy because he cares for others. And my question to you is this. Do you have compassion for others? Do you have concern for others? Be careful not to place your goals. Be careful to not place your wants. Be careful to not place your dreams before your family. God wants us to be more concerned about people than we are prophets. So many people put prophets before people. We lose compassion when we lose concern for people. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 and 5, it says this. It says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It's not selfish. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. And this last part is very important. It says it don't keep score. It keeps no record of wrongs. My question to you today is, do you love others? Are you kind to others? Do you love your spouse? Those of you who have a spouse, do you love your spouse? Do you allow other things to come before God? Do you allow other things to come before your spouse? I'm going to give you the biblical order of the family and how God intends it to be. It is God first, your spouse second, and then your kids. The problem happens when we allow kids to come between us and our spouse. I say this. If they get too out of hand, just take them out, tell God they died, and have another one. <laughs> Not really. But if we keep things in the biblical order, things will be in order. Do you love your children? Those of you that have children, do you love them? (laughs) Do you love your family? Me, if you ask me, it just depends on what day it is. I have some family that's hard to love. Oh, Jesus. I wonder how I'm even related to them. If we didn't look alike a little bit, I would think, "Mm -mm, there ain't no way. I'm just kidding. A godly man is this, number two. A godly man is consistent in life. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 22 says this. But you know that Timothy has proved himself. Timothy was consistent Timothy was was a man of integrity, and the Bible is full of Scripture about integrity. Look at Proverbs 20 and 7. It says, the righteous lead blameless lives. Blessed are their children after them. You want your kids to be blessed? One of you. I'll think, thank you. How many of you want your kids to be blessed? Half of you. Let me ask you again. How many of you want your kids to be blessed? Come on. Yes, Lord. Well, let me, let me read to you how that happens. The righteous lead blameless lives. Be righteous and blameless. Men, if we live righteous, our kids will follow us and be blessed. You say, how's that? I just read it to you. 
You see, our kids, they're watching us. There's a country song, and I don't remember how all the words go. I just remember he said, I'm watching you. I'm cool or something like that. And, and the, the dad was cussing, and the little boy said a cuss word. And he said, where'd you learn that? And he said, I was watching you. That is so true. When Jaden, he's not here, so I'll use him for my example today. When he was a little boy. He had this infatuation with microphones. You see, I was a cattle auctioneer for a long time. And uh, so he would see me do that, and then he would see me at church on Sunday, and it seemed like every day of, of the week I had a microphone in my hand. So when he was a little boy, a little, little bitty guy, one of my, one of my uh, friends who's another auctioneer, he... Uh, he had one of those uh, microphones, you know, with the great big heads on it. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Like if you think of Nashville, you would see this microphone. And he used to have that microphone, and he would be in there, and he would be preaching. And he'd be doing what I was doing. And then, the, you know, in a few minutes, he'd be over there going, blah, 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 you know, just doing stuff like that. Why was he doing that? Because that's what he's seen me do. So I'm saying all that to say this, guys, if you talk to her bad, guess what the kids are going to do? If you treat her with respect and reverence, guess how they're going to treat her? Listen, I'm going to tell you something. If they ever talk bad to their mama, they know this, and it ain't happened, but they know this is going to happen. They're going to get the taste slapped out of their mouth. I do believe that God put padding back here on this backside for a purpose. And it ain't just to sit on. You see, success is built on character, not on image. And a man of integrity has a private life that is just like his public life. question are we doing this in our homes you don't have to answer me today this is just things to think about are we living a consistent life a life of integrity are you positive or are you negative all the time is your cup half empty or half full is the sky falling how's your attitude are you always mad? What if I ask your kids about you? How would they describe you? Some of y'all are thinking, whew, I'm glad he don't know none of my kids. <laughs> if you ask my kids about me, they would probably tell you my dad's just mad all the time. You see, because they're, they're teenagers now and they know everything. I remember when I was a teenager, I knew everything too. Till I turned about 24 and I'm like, wow, how did I ever make it through this? <laughs> Are you kind? I just want to remind you, remember, our example shapes the future of our children. Amen. Integrity should be part of our every, every facet of our lives. It should be. The way we talk. The way we speak to their mother. The way that we treat others. Should all be an example to our children. Philippians 4 and 9 says this. It says, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. Paul says here, church, if you do this, God will be with you. Dads, can you say this to your family? Whatever I do, you do. Can you say, do this and God will bless you. 
Let me move on. That one was kind of heavy, and I don't want to be on you today. Here's number three. A godly man is committed in the good and bad times. Philippians chapter 2, verses 24 through 27 says this, And I am confident in the Lord that, that I myself will come soon. But I think it necessary to send back to you Ephrodite. However you say that big word, it's kind of like mayonnaise. <laughs> my brother, my co-worker and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you send to take care of my needs. For he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill and almost died. But God had mercy on him and not only on him but also on me to spare me sorrow upon sorrow you see God is looking for men who put commitment before comfort and guys I just happen to know something about being a guy we like comfort that's why lazy boy is in business Isn't it amazing that, that the recliners wear out twice as fast as every other piece of furniture in the living room? We like our things comfortable. One of the problems I have is this. Every time I have a piece of clothing that gets comfortable, it disappears. You see, women don't know this, but you got to get things about Three quarters of the way wore out before it finally fits right. Come on. I see some of you guys have experienced the same problem. <laughs> Ephroditus was committed to doing exactly what God wanted him to do. Man, I want to say this to you. Let's be committed to doing exactly what God wants us to do. And what is that? What is that? What does God expect of me, preacher? He expects you to be the head of your house. He expects you to be the leader of your home. He expects you to be the lover of your family. You see, Dad, in spite of the circumstances, we must stay committed. And Hollywood, which a lot of people look to for answers, is not the great place to look for answers because they portray men as mindless, senseless beings. And that's not you. God has called us to be committed in the good and the not-so-good times. And, 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 and let's change gears now. Let me, let, me, let me talk to you about this. Let me talk to you about three areas that we need to be committed Number one, be committed to your family. Because after all, God created the family first. Malachi chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, it says, You ask why? It is because the Lord is the witness between you and your wife of your or you and the wife of your youth. You have been unfaithful to her, though she is your partner, the wife of your marriage covenant. Has not the one God made you? You belong to him in body and spirit. And what does the one God seek? Godly offspring. So be on your guard and do not be unfaithful to the wife of your youth. Friends, if you want to influence your kids, if you want to be an influence to your grandkids, treat their mother with respect. Commitment is not about feelings. There are days that I wake up that I do not feel like being a pastor. There are days I wake up and I don't feel like being a husband. Come on. There are days I wake up and I don't even feel like being a dad. Let's be honest. But we have got to put our commitments before our comforts. There are days I don't want to get up and go to work, but I do. I'll move on. Commitment is not about feelings. 
Let's not be slack in our commitments. Here's number two. The second thing that we should be committed to is be committed to being a loving leader. Ephesians 5, 22 through 24. Now I want to read this again to you. Be committed to being a loving leader. I want you to hear that word. Loving leader. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. You would think every man in here would be like, Amen. Verse 23, for the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so wives should also submit to their husbands in everything. Men, our wives are not our servants. All you ladies should be like... They are our helpmates, according to the word of God. They were not committed to meet our every need to be at our beck and call. Because if you read on in this scripture I just read to you, it says, Husbands, love your wife. And then it goes on to say, To give of yourself as Christ did for the church. Be willing to give your life for her is what it's saying to you. Are you willing to do that every day? Are you that committed? Because if you were, things might be a whole lot better. Now, there are some days I question myself with with my little sweet wife. Yes. But I have to be committed have to be committed <laughs> let me move on <laughs> men the truth is we need to just be the loving leaders in our homes we need to be that loving leader that God has called us to be and sometimes leading isn't easy sometimes you have to say the hard things. Sometimes you have to make the hard decision. Sometimes you have to make the hard answer to where it doesn't make you popular, but it makes you committed to Christ. We need to be the loving leader that God has called us to be because here's what I know. This room is full of potential. You're not what Hollywood portrays you to be. You're not sorry. You're not spineless. You're not self-centered. You are men of God, chosen on purpose, for a purpose, and that's to lead your families to Christ. Lead them with love. And I'm going to close with this. Number three, be committed to risk it all for Christ. There's a group of Gurkhas from Nepal, and they were asked if they would be willing to jump from transport planes into combat zones at night. And the Gurkhas were known as a people that would never say no. So they gathered up and, and, and they began to talk about this, about what was just requested of them to do. And they said, no, no, we're not willing to do that. So the next day, their, their head guy, the Gurkha's head guy came and he, he sought out that British commander and he said, you know what, after discussing it last night, we have decided that we will jump. But here are our conditions. He said, the first thing is, is that the plane has got to fly Slow. The man answered him and said, we always fly slow when people are jumping out. He said, we don't want it 
over a rocky area. It needs to be a soft area where we can land, that, and we'll do it. And he said, well, it's going to be over the jungle, so it'll be soft. And he said, the third thing is that we request is this, and we will do it, is that the plane can be flying no higher than 100 feet. And this commander said, well, sir, that's impossible. Because the parachute will never open up within 100 feet. And the Gurkha leader said, oh, you mean we get to have parachutes? Then we'll jump from anywhere. (laughs) Today I'm asking you men of God to be willing to take a risk for Christ. Be willing to do what it takes. Be willing to stand in the gap. Be willing to make the difference. Be willing to fight. Be willing to stand. Be willing to kneel. Be willing to be pliable in the hands of your God. You see, our church could use some Gurkha-like commitments and courage. To be willing to do whatever it takes. Be willing to go against culture. Be willing to not be normal. Be willing to not be status quo. You see the truth is I want to be a man of integrity. I want my children and my grandchildren to be blessed. And in order for my children and grandchildren to be blessed, I must be a man of integrity. I must be a man who follows God and stays close to Him. You see, the old timers used to say it like this. Brother, you just need to let go and let God. Some of you need to do this. No more games. Some of you just dipping your toe in the swimming pool. Jump on in that thing. Hell's hot. So is Texas. It doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. What matters is the family that God has given you. Place your commitment over your comfort. You want to risk something? Risk your life for Christ. Men, here's what I know. Our families will follow us. So let's lead them in a way that is pleasing to the Lord some of you would say pastor I hear everything you're saying but I've already made some mistakes I've already messed it up okay but it's not too late to make a difference now you see I wished I would have heard a message like this years ago I believe that it would have made a difference in me. You see, I was looking around, seeing what everybody else was doing, and I was trying to do that, thinking I was doing right by my family. God didn't call you to be superman. He called you to be a super servant. To serve Him. To love Him. To put him first. And when we do that, guys, everything else will get in order. I have I have several cousins, but two that come to my mind. It's Troy and Tracy. Troy and Tracy were twins. They were raised in Aldine, Texas. And I remember going to see them one time. They were both in prison, in the same prison, which was uncommon. I don't think the prison knew that. But they had been in and out of prison from 
by the age of 17 and they were in their 30s at this time. And I remember talking to them, you know, about what is, what is going on, what causes this? And they were raised with, with everything they ever wanted. And I'll never forget Tracy saying this to me. He said, Gene, I would have traded it all just to have time. my mama his mama was my mama's sister and that's so true you know we, we try to give them everything that we think that they want or that we think that they need and really what they need is you and your time what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul guys if you could do anything for your family what would it be you see the one goal I have with my family is that I meet them all in heaven not that I have the biggest house the most, most, most is, is that I get to spend eternity with them. That's my goal. That's my desire. And the only way I know to make that happen is just what I've shared with you. Be a loving, committed leader and lover of what God has entrusted Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for your love today. Thank you for your mercies today. And Lord, I know that you see the potential in this room. And I pray today, God, that you would encourage these fathers. pray, God, that you would just draw us closer to you. Lord, that you would help us to focus on you. Lord, I ask you today. Lord, that you would create in us a desire like we've never had before. In our level of commitment. Help us to not look for comfort, but help us to look for commitment. Help us to lead a life that is pleasing to you. I thank you for this. Friends, while your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, I want to ask you some questions. The first question is this. How is your relationship with the Lord Jesus? say, Pastor, I need to make things right with him. Pray for me. Is that you? I want to see your hand. I want to pray for you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. You can put them back there. Maybe this is you and you say, Pastor, I've been putting comfort over commitment. Pray for me. Is that you? Thank you. I see your hands. Thank you. You can put them down. I want to ask all of you to repeat this prayer with me. Would you please say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Lord, I realize that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. Lord, today, I'm asking you to come into my heart, come into my life. Lord, forgive me for all my sins. Lord, help me 
to serve you with all of my future. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, you've seen the hands and you know the hearts that were lifted up before you today. Lord, I'm asking you that you would help us as a body of believers. Help us to be steadfast. Help us to be unmovable, God. Help us to stand on your word. Lord, let us not ever compromise. Help us, I pray. Amen. Well, dads, we have, a, we have a gift for you today. You're going to be able to get it on your way out. I think that you will enjoy it. You know, how many of you like gifts that you can use right away? Well, this, yeah. Let me ask that again. Are y'all going to participate or not today? What is wrong with y'all? Well, we have a gift for you on your way out. Be sure and get it. You'll enjoy it. And enjoy it today. Amen. Brother, come on. And know this, why Brother Eric's coming up here. Know this. Your best days are ahead of you. And I'm certain of this because I have read the back of the book. And it says this. It says that we, the blood-bought, born-again believer, We get to spend eternity with him. God bless you. Man, what a powerful message this morning. Uh, real quick, just a reminder, those that had, did a baby did a child dedication today, we have a reception for you um, in the back room. Well, not the back room, but to the left of the nursery. Uh, so just go in there and get some cake and something to drink. Um, we have Ladies Bible Study Tuesday mornings at 10. And we have adult Bible study um, every Thursday at 7 p.m. So if you want to come up here and hang out with us on Tuesday, we're here 10 a.m. And uh, Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. Amen. Father, we just come to you today with one simple prayer. Father, I ask that all the men here today begin to be more committed to our families. Be more committed to serving you and be more committed to becoming loving leaders. That's all I ask, Father. Father, also just keep us safe as we travel home today and spend time with our families. Father, I pray that the rest of this day is pleasant for everyone. And we ask this in your son's holy name we pray. Amen.